confronting the obstacles of a shifting musical marketplace, Chicano musicians continue to absorb, adapt, and redefine their musical identity, none more successfully than a band called The Midnighters. You know, when the Beatles came over, people were shouting, and, and they had their idols there, and I think in our community, we were the Beatles. We were bringing our fans up. They wanted somebody to, you know, shout for and, and, and to root for, and I think we were it. The Midnighters not only entertain the Chicano community, they express its spirit in music. The heart of East LA is Whittier Boulevard. During the 60s and 70s, the main artery for a late nightlife, a Mexican-American social scene on wheels. All this is captured in the 1965 Midnighters hit, Whittier Boulevard. Puerto Boulevard starts off with a grito, which is part of ranchera music from Mexico that's used all the time to kind of display happiness and, you know, just everybody having a good time. So that's how they started off the song, which was very clever for, the, for them because they, it had kind of this Mexican tinge to it. Kids were cruising on other streets across America, but on Whittier Boulevard, young Mexican-Americans were celebrating their community, themselves, and most of all, their new homegrown music. In East LA, one of the most beloved DJs was an Anglo, Dick Hug, Huggy Boy. The something to do was to look and listen to Huggy Boy. And you'd be driving down, down the street, and you'd have your windows open in your car, and you'd hear the same song. It was everywhere. And then you say, hey, why don't we go down and see Huggy Boy? So you go down and you see Huggy Boy, bye bye, and it was a destination. And when we started making, started recording things and started making records, we could actually bring it to him. And while he's on the air listening to something else, he'd put it on the thing, he'd listen to it and say, hey, hey, okay, yeah, I'll play it. And he'd play it. L.A. DJs like Huggy Boy, Art LeBeau, and Casey Kasem nurtured mid-60s Chicano rock, especially bands like The Midnighters. They were special, and they had Little Willie G and he could sing a ballad as well as anybody. I know you come to tell me that it's so Little Willie G was another product of LA's black and brown culture. Once in a while Just once in a while I believe the community itself, East LA, was able to relate to us because we were like them, and we lived, you know, next door to them. Uh, we shopped where they shopped. Uh, they, could, they could always find us at the Record Inn or the Record Rack on Whittier Boulevard. They could always find us rehearsing uh, at St. Alfonso's in a basement. We had to find our own heroes. You know? And the Midnighters, to us, were, uh, I mean, I remember a point when, when the Midnighters couldn't walk down the street because they were doing the whole Beatle thing. They chased them down to tear their clothes off. Suddenly, East Los Angeles has come into its own musically, and there's this whole sense that we've been validated. The irony, of course, is that it was still being done in this little pocket, almost like this little island. And like I say, they didn't realize that it would be hard to get marketed uh, because they were Chicanos, because there was still, uh, it just wasn't a marketable thing. It was too local. Uh, it wasn't like the blacks who were all over the country. See, African-American culture was, uh, there was still racism but you could market it because it was a national concept. I think that a lot of these groups did want to make it like the Midnighters. They did want a national exposure, international exposure. Uh, but I also think that they were locked out in many ways. I, I had a dream of, of having a Chicano uh, Motown and, and I fell short because of the lack of uh, a maturity that, that I did not have. I wasn't a businessman, you know, it was just 
some Mexican American running out there trying to produce records any old way that he could, and how he did it, he didn't care because I still had neighborhood inside of me. I was still kind of a neighborhood guy, you know. And uh, you know, hey, you don't cross in my territory. You know, <laughs> do this and do that. Chicanos and Mexican people living in this insular community like East LA have um, this notion that that there's certain places where we don't belong. And, and sometimes, even though that chalk line is, is drawn, and that line in the sand is drawn, sometimes we do it ourselves. The fact that a lot of these groups were mainly cover bands, you know, and, and were not quite ready to jump over that wall and start writing the songs, it did hurt a little bit. Even though they weren't playing original music, uh, it was the Chicano interpretation of R&B. Uh, that's what they, they drew from. And there was nothing else that sounded like it. Even though it was uh, rhythm and blues, it was soul music, but filtered through the Chicano sensibilities and those, then, that musicianship that made it, it, it was very original. 